Hey friends, how you doing? It's Friday. Friday's a good day. The weekend is literally round the corner. You turn the corner, bam, there's Saturday. Out of nowhere. Just hit you in the face. You could start a barbecue. You could go to the cinema. You could go dancing, if you're into that. Go shopping. Have a picnic, maybe. Stay and play games all weekend. Obviously the best thing in that list that I just read out. Because you don't want to be one of those nerdy guys, or nerdy girls, that goes outside. I mean... Outside, there's, there's like sun and oxygen and trees and they make, they make your eyes squint and you'll get sunburn. I mean, God, duh. it's only nerds that go outside. You should be staying in, playing games forever. That's what it's all about. I'm going to stop messing around now. It's post E3, of course. Everything's sort of chilled out now. And I've recovered from man flu, which is brilliant. It really kicked my ass for a few days. Man flu, as you may know, is a terrible illness. Not many people survive it, but I pulled through. I had lots of vitamins. I drank lots of tea. Tea's important. It makes the world go round. And I feel better now. It's, it's all good. It's all good in the hood. My competition to design me a video intro is now over. The deadline was yesterday. I had over 500 entries, which was pretty insane and I had to look through all my PMs and watch them all, check all my emails, make sure I didn't miss any and I've got like a list of 20 good ones. Now I'm going to share that list with my mates and we're all going to watch them and we're going to have a nice little discussion and pick which ones we think are the top three and then uh, yeah going to do a little video on that, should be pretty funny. We got some really silly entries as well, obviously people trolling, having a bit of a laugh but yeah they made me laugh some of them, I'll, I will be honest, like the really stupid ones are quite quite funny. <laughs> There's an absolutely great one with some gangster music in the background which I'll have to share with you guys but uh, yeah look forward to that video and to announcing the winners. The top three winners each get a Avamedia Live Gamer Portable HD. The top one also gets $200 from my wallet as a personal thank you because uh, I'm going to be using that intro in my videos. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to posting that one. If you didn't see yesterday as well, I've also got a brand new giveaway which is a PS3. So uh, again, this is from my wallet. I'm paying for this. It's not a promotion or anything. You get a PS3 and you also get a copy of Need for Speed most wanted all you got to do is go over to that video there's an annotation on the screen right now it'll also be in the description and uh, just leave a comment ps3 for free and you win the chance of winning simple as that and i noticed that xbox have decided to do a u-turn on their xbox one policies regarding the internet connection and the uh, the trading and reselling of, of games Obviously after the Xbox One was announced and then the press conference at E3, the internet went nuts basically about some of their policies with, with used games and with the once every 24 hour online check-in thingy that they had, which seemed very strange. But uh, yeah, basically they've gone, sorry guys, we made a mistake, we've listened to your criticism. Now you're not going to require an internet connection to play offline Xbox One games. The only time you're going to require the internet if you use an Xbox One is the first time you turn it on for like a first time setup thing. And then after that, you, you never have to connect to the internet again if you don't want to. Um, obviously you won't be able to get game updates and stuff if you don't, but you don't have to. You can also take your Xbox One anywhere you want to go and play games just like you can on the Xbox 360. Obviously their terms before that wouldn't have allowed you to do that, but they've done a complete U-turn on that. You're also going to be able to trade in, lend, resell, uh, gift and also rent disc based games just like the way you do today. There's going to be no limitations on using and, and sharing games. So basically it's going to work exactly the same way that it does at the moment on the 360. It's a massive backtrack from Microsoft. Obviously the backlash was a bit too much for them and they decided, you know guys, if we don't do something about this then we're going to have a big problem and the PS4 is just going to crush us because Sony, I think, had a great conference with the PS4. Basically, it ticked all the boxes. Everything that gamers wanted to hear, the PS4 seemed to have that. And um, Jack Tretton, when he was on the stage doing his presentation, had a big smirk on his face when he was talking about all the different details of the PlayStation 4 because he knew that they'd absolutely nailed it. So yeah, I think Microsoft have saved themselves a little grace, maybe. But people won't forget what they did in the first place and what they wanted to do 
with the uh, the always on internet stuff and you won't be able to trade and resell your games and stuff. I think if they're so uptight about reselling games though, they should just put more emphasis on like the online library sort of thing. See like on the PC with Steam, obviously I can't resell a Steam game, can I? So Valve don't have to worry about me going mad when I can't sell my copy of Half-Life 2. On the PC, I think digital distribution is great. You know, we, we can get games for cheaper, we can download games instantly, we don't have to go to the, the shop and buy them. Obviously, with consoles, people like to have something a bit more physical, I think, but like I said, if Microsoft are so finicky about that, just concentrate more on creating a good online library and giving people like deals and day one downloads for for Xbox One games. I don't know if they've planned that, but it's definitely something they should look into because a lot of people actually have good internet connections now and you know they want the option of being able to download the game rather than having to go to the shop and buy a physical copy of it. There are people like that, and I'm not making that up. So yeah, what do you guys think about the console war at E3 this year? Do you think Sony won? Do you think Microsoft won? Uh, which console? Are you going to be picking up? Are you going to be getting both? Are you just going to be getting the Xbox or the PS4? Has the damage already been done by Microsoft? Are you just going to pick up a PS4 because of what they said originally? Now they've backtracked on it. Also, I'm pretty sure the PS4 is $100 cheaper than the Xbox One, but it doesn't come with the, the camera. Obviously, the, the Xbox One comes with the Kinect and it's like a mandatory thing to have it plugged in but the PS4 doesn't come with the uh, the PSI camera. But then again, the PS4 i camera isn't as big a deal to the PlayStation as the Kinect is to the Xbox. Me personally, I'll probably be picking up both consoles because there's gonna be great exclusive games on both. For me, it's never been about fanboying for one console over the other because if you do that, you're just gonna miss out on some great games because I've said this before, both platforms have brilliant exclusive games and they've all got their own unique features that are pretty cool and interesting so it's about experiencing both of them i know for some people that isn't an option because you can only afford one or the other or you can only afford to buy like a, a pc or something but yeah i'll definitely be picking up both because i just want to experience all of those exclusive games that i know are going to be really good and i don't want to be that guy that misses out on one because I'm fanboying over the other one, if you get what I mean. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the consoles in the comments. Which one you're getting, why you're getting it, and what was the deal breaker for you. Hope you've all been enjoying the E3 coverage, the Ubisoft videos, the Battlefield videos, the DayZ videos. There's a playlist on my channel as well. You can check that out if you missed any of them. I'd recommend going to watch some of the interviews. I actually tried to ask gamer questions rather than just journalist questions because, you know, I'm a gamer at heart and I want to be able to relate to you guys. So instead of just going, tell us about the new engine or um, tell us about what you're doing this game, I'm, I tried to ask the important gamer questions, you know, the sort of stuff that you would want to know rather than what, say, like a games publication would want to know, you know, like a big news website or something. So, yeah, hopefully those interviews are quite relatable with you. As you probably noticed, I'm playing Warframe here. Now, this, of course, was announced that it's going to be on PlayStation 4 as well. They didn't announce it was coming out on Xbox One. Maybe in the future we'd see that, but at the moment it's just coming out on PS4. Obviously, it's going to be free to play too. I think we're going to see a lot more free to play games on the next gen consoles you know free to play is becoming a massive thing on the pc and i can see that transcending over to next gen consoles quite frequently there's also a game that caught my eye i saw martin uh, in the littlewood playing this the yogscast dude uh, it's called cube world it's like a voxel based game with procedurally generated worlds very similar to minecraft in a lot of respects but there's a big sort of questing element in there and loads of new stuff thrown in so I've contacted the the devs of the game so I'm going to try and get a key for that and maybe bring some footage out of that for you guys because it does actually seem quite interesting I know very different to what you'd normally expect on my channel but um, I think it looks pretty cool so I'm going to try and uh, get access to that and check it out I've also started my Last of Us playthrough I'm doing this with Christine so it's going to be like a dual thing like me and her will both be uh, talking about the game as we're playing. I thought it'd be quite interesting to have Christine there to, to bounce off as we're playing through the game. Uh, I'll be on the control and she'll be sat next to me and yeah we'll both be commentating live stuff on the game and yeah we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm planning on doing the entire game so you can look forward to that. Hopefully we're going to have daily episodes of that so yeah really looking forward to doing that my first 
let's play and I hope it goes down well. Question for you guys, not saying I'm going to do this, I might do this, but I've had a lot of requests for uh, merchandise. I've, I've had a lot of people messaging me going, oh, you should start like a t-shirt shop or you should sell some cups with your logo on or something. Would you guys be interested in stuff like that? Now, if I did do something like that, it'd have to look good. It'd have to be classy because one thing I can't stand about like gamer merchandise is if like there's a name all over it. You know, so as an example, um, on the Battlefield website, you can buy loads of t-shirts, but they've all got the Battlefield logo on, and I don't know, I just think it's a bit tacky, like, I wouldn't wear that t-shirt. There's like a really cool looking t-shirt on there with like an EOD bot schematic, like with all the parts, but then like at the bottom, they've got the, the, the Battlefield 3 logo, and it sort of ruined it for me, you know what I mean? Like I. I don't want to just look like a, a consumer whore that's just advertising someone's product. So if I do t-shirts and merchandise, they'd be classy and they wouldn't have like Jack Frags written all over them. It'd be cool t-shirts that'd be relevant to my content. And I'd actually design the t-shirts myself and get a good designer in to work with. So would you be interested in that? Would you actually buy that stuff? Would you want to wear it? Uh, like I said, it wouldn't be anything cheesy or corny it'd actually be cool looking stuff that maybe you could wear or have in your cupboard if you've got like a, a mug or something i don't know i'm just trying to spitball some ideas and uh, yeah let me know what you think about that good idea bad idea who knows you tell me i think that's about it for today folks i quite enjoy these little chatty videos where i can just ramble for a bit in front of a microphone it's it's cool talk about updates and some news and stuff yeah I, i'm liking it it's pretty casual I like talking to you guys, even though I'm not really t talking to anyone at the moment. I'm just sat at my desk speaking to a microphone. Hi microphone, how you doing? It's weird, that microphone has literally just captured my voice for 25 minutes. It's like it's eaten my soul or something. I'm, You know, it, it's actually captured part of me. How, how does it work? Magnets, how do they work? I don't even know. Anyways, take care guys. Hope you have a nice weekend. Make sure you go and enter the PS3 competition. It's a global giveaway. Anyone can enter. You don't want to miss out on that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.